Right, okay, here we go. This is the latest Democracy for Developer blog video. I'm Cliff, I'm the uh, programmer and designer of the game. Uh, it's been three weeks since we did um, a video, so I need to do them every three weeks now. Um, but, ah, oh, typical. The minute I start recording, things start bleeping. Anyway, whatever. Um, Yep, so uh, new time for a new video, new hat, obscure reference, 10 points if you get the reference. Um, no one will get it. <laughs> anyway, uh, loads of stuff has happened in the, in, in the last few weeks. I mean, the most obvious apparent thing is Italy. Um, I'm a big fan of Italy, been there quite a few times, I guess. Uh, it's one of the first foreign countries I ever remember going to, actually. A uh, very long time ago. Love Italian food. It is the best food. Um, yeah, so Italy's in the game. Um, we do a lot of research. And um, if you're Italian, you'll sort of like look at the game and sort of think, did you do any research? <laughs> uh, but we do. Um, because we want to check that we're putting in an accurate um, load of data and not just like the assumptions and prejudices that you may have if you've just like been there as a tourist. Um, and like you know seen it on TV you know we want it to be um, vaguely accurate a bigger economy than I thought a stronger economy than I thought um, a much worse problem with organized crime than I thought actually um, the mafia is huge the mafia is big business it's financially um, very impactful but we'll come back to that um, so this is Italy welcome to Italy um, we have some some new stuff that's gone in so we have like a new situation just called media monopoly so I thought this was the case and I spent a lot of time trying to find sources to back this up so Italy is unusual in Europe in that the predominant um, media is still TV by far and that's not so much the case as so like online news sources and stuff like that have not um, kind of taken over to the extent in Italy that, that they have everywhere else um, so, and you you have a very concentrated ownership of um, the media um, in Italy this is also true in other countries. It's it's true to some extent in the UK and in the US, um, but there, there's still uh, like pushback against that. Specifically in the the UK because we have the BBC, it's um, quite a, a it's a very big and very well funded competition to private media monopolies. Anyway, so. Um, I thought this needed to go in because I thought it was very relevant for uh, modeling Italy. It seems to generally um, be the case that when you have large media monopolies um, like TV news and everything, they tend to be fairly right leaning culturally. Um, if you think of stuff like Fox News and stuff like that, and um, some Italian TV seems to be the same way. So I'm having it actually decrease liberalism, which is quite handy because I kind of needed to do that to accurately reflect Italy. Because when we put all of the um, stats in, Italy was uh, all the policies in, Italy was incredibly liberal. And I think it's one of those countries where the people aren't as liberal as that, but um, the people making the laws have put liberal laws in place. And Italy is very famous for a place that will have a load of laws that people ignore as well as taxes so you may have a law saying you can't discriminate here um, but people do anyway um, and that kind of disconnect is really hard to model so um, this is a situation which required a lot of balancing because it can now show up in any country it currently only shows up in the in Italy it nearly shows up in the US and UK but it doesn't but basically this is a function of competition law press freedom and internet speed so if you have really decent internet, then that breaks the like TV monopoly, right? Um, if you have really strong competition law, and Italy doesn't, um, that will break the monopoly. And if you have, um, you know, really strong uh, press freedom, that will break it. So there are ways of changing this. Now, in order to get this in and to have it have some teeth, I have changed uh, how. Uh, in fact, I don't know if that's reflected properly there actually. 
Um, it used to be really trivial to adjust competition law, and I changed it. I thought I changed it more. I might have to double check that. Um, because changing competition law should be hard. Anyway, so that's a new thing that's in. <clears throat> um, what else is in? Um, we d I just put in a new thing which is quite hard to show you. I'll just go to the next turn in case it's going to trigger, but it won't, will it? No, it's just, it's just typical. Um, sometimes when you get these pop-up messages saying that a, um, a political donor, um, by which we mean these people here, um, who are all real people I know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's Kaz. That's Paul. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, sometimes they pop up and they say, look, one of your political donors is demanding that you do a certain policy. And if you don't, they'll quit and you will lose their money. And if you don't have many members in your party, and at the moment, look, we, we actually we do have a few, but we don't have that many. Um, right? Then um, a lot of your funds are going to come from donors. It is actually more important than people think. So um, I put in a new thing, and that new thing is that if you do give in to a donor and implement a policy, even if it's something you supported anyway, that is seen as quite sleazy. It boosts corruption, it reduces democracy, and it reduces the level of trust. So your level of trustworthiness, um, obviously I haven't done it yet, will go down, as well as like the corruption as a second order effect. I think that's important. I, I don't think we're covering corruption as much as we should. And uh, I'm doing Italy, so like we need to cover this stuff. Um, we've made quite a few changes to corruption, actually. Um, organised crime now causes corruption. Obviously, we have organised crime here, um, and I don't think it caused corruption before. We have a big boost to organised crime from the Mafia. I kind of looked into this a bit, and I was thinking, what is the political situation in terms of policy? that has resulted in strong organized crime in Italy. Uh, because you want you want to have some data that causes it, right? And th there doesn't really seem to be any, it seems to be like a, a historical thing. And like almost everything in Europe can be traced back to World War II. It was so devastating in, in all sorts of cultural and economic ways. Um, and I think there may be um, an element of kind of like a power vacuum resulting from like the state of Italy at the end of the war. Um, it, it's it's like really hard to know. Um, also geographically, the location of Italy makes it an interesting kind of like gateway for drugs. Um, not so much uh, for a problem for Italy, but, but the drugs like landing there and then being distributed onwards, which is something that the Mafia would like be involved in. Anyway, the Mafia are in as like a hard-coded thing that boosts organised crime. Um, something else we had to do, because when we looked up, what is the economic impact of the Mafia? It's massive. It's staggering. And we have not vaguely reflected it in the game, simply because it would just break the game. <laughs> but we didn't multiply the effect of um, organised crime by like 40 or something. Because uh, it used to be really trivial. It used to be like 20 million pounds or dollars or euros a year, a quarter rather. Who cares? Um, but it's it's massive. So this has all sorts of effects on the economy, a kind of drag on the economy, people paying protection money um, rather than investing in their business, stuff like that. Um, and obviously all this money flowing into organised crime is not being taxed and blah, blah, blah. So that kind of like shows up now. If you look in Italy, if you look in... Um, here you see organized crime is on this first list you know it's significant it's a bigger drain than the police force and the state water company and the road building um, it costs almost as much as university grants i think it needs to be in there um so that's in there something else that's in um where are you where are you i need to think where i put it yeah this is a new policy someone um on my forums i read all these comments by the way on the forums um, someone on there had said that uh, basically the, the trouble with environmentalists in the game is the only way you get people to do environmental things is you threaten them or <laughs> you tax them. There's no persuasion, there's no social engineering for the environmental movement. Um, and obviously there should be, right? So um, this is like a TV campaign saying, save carbon, um, and uh, with more detail. 
and uh, th that will encourage people to become environmentalists over a very long period, very slow impact. Um, obviously, environmentalists like to see their message on TV, um, and it will reduce uh, CO2 emissions over the long term. People will take will eat less meat. That will be a, a, a part of it, um, and they will drive less. They will walk walk more and stuff like that, share cars, whatever. Um, and this is active at the moment for Italy. I think Italy is the first country in the world where, where children have to have lessons about climate change. Um, anyway, it's very interesting. So that's in. Um, I fixed a bug with EU membership, which used to occasionally just um, deactivate <laughs> in a rather critical, without referendums or Brexit, so it would just stop. Uh, anyway, that's fixed. Um, and there's a new thing in there. Um, which we'll talk about, um, which is Erasmus, where are you? That's the official logo of the Erasmus program. Anyway, so the Erasmus thing is this kind of like teaching educational kids go abroad and go on schemes and do, go to other universities and uh, it's all very educational and international and stuff like that. Um, this is a thing, young people like it. Um, it's a boost to education, obviously. It's money coming out in the EU budget uh, to go into education, so that's an impact. Um, I did a lot of discussing with people about the impact of this because people say it'll be massive, it's amazing, but then you look at how many people do it, and it's not that many in terms of the population of Europe. And even if you assume a big multiplier, like for every person who does it, they tell 10 people it's great, um, then yeah we've been maybe a little bit generous on like income and and happiness for youth there from erasmus but i don't know it's, it's very hard to gauge but anyway that's you know that's a thing that comes with being in the eu uh, so that's another situation that's in there um universal basic income which is very popular with the young kids these days love a bit of ubi and memes and i don't know rock and roll um, universal basic income used to be massively cheaper than this um, we did the sums and basically the amount of money we were crediting to each citizen was vastly higher than the cost <laughs> um, yeah we, we just got that wrong so like UBI is a lot more expensive than it used to be so if you thought it was an easy win um, you're wrong polarization which is a, a situation which is quite hard to trigger but if you get fake news and by the way, something I should point out is that this, this is helping to cause fake news. You won't see it here until it triggers, but it's in the background. So um, Italy has a vulnerability to fake news because of its media ownership. Um, anyway, if you get fake news, that can lead to polarisation. And when you look at polarisation, it, it's a situation like this, but it seems to have nothing here. So what it now has, it has some text explaining what it does. Um, because it does stuff that you can't really see. So uh, the last thing that I want to uh, mention is something that is very under the hood and behind the scenes uh, to do with equations. Um, the way the game is designed and made is that, that we have all these objects, like that's an object, that's an object, this group of people is an object, this person is an object, and that everything is linked by equations so all of these lines if i hover over this and you see all of these lines every one of these lines is an equation and there'll be something like 0.2 plus x to the 2 times 0.4 or something anyway um they used to only have like three parameters yeah uh, and now they can uh, or three four anyway you can now have an extra two um, so the equations can be more subtle and more complicated. So if you're a modder, um, you will find you can add extra things. Um, I need to write a guide on this and how to do it. I want to make modding really easy for this game and it isn't yet. I mean, it is compared to almost any normal game, but like it could be made so much easier. I, I'm really into modding. Uh, some of the mods are great. I really, I really like looking at the Steam Workshop mods. Um, so um, th there's an opportunity for a lot more complexity. So for example, if you have something like petrol tax, for example, um, if I go into here, if I go, if I right click that, yeah. So 
The impact of petrol tax on car usage follows a certain curve, and I plot that curve here. It's not much of a curve in this case. Um, but there's an additional variable um, that impacts that curve, and that is the electric car transition. If you've already persuaded everyone by other means to buy an electric car, you could double petrol tax, no one cares. So that has to be in there. So you have a relationship there between the petrol tax policy and the extent to which people use cars. And then, and, and that relationship is, is kind of like um, affected by another variable, which is the electric car transition. And what we could do now is include two more variables in there. Um, now I can't think of, of two that would be required there, but um, it allows us to get quite subtle and complicated effects into the game. Um, and there are thousands of equations in the game. So I need to go through them and see, um, am I missing out on something um, in order to better reflect the true circumstances. Anyway, um, so this is the stuff that I've been doing the last three weeks. And there's a lot of balancing and, and, and boring stuff that you don't get to see, optimization and stuff like that. Um, a lot of missing text um, that was in the game. If you play in other languages, you might have, especially if you play in uh, Polish or Russian, uh, you may have found the occasional policy or whatever that was in English anyway. Uh, that was because it was super new. And you will now find that there is a new one. Um, oh, it's already implemented, isn't it? I can't find it, that's why. Uh, yeah, the CO2 thing is a new one, right? So I don't have a Polish and Russian version of that yet. Same with this. Um, so they always lag slightly, um, but a load of that got done recently and a some stuff that was wrong um, got fixed. Loads of what I'm getting at is that, like, um, if I don't have a huge like bullet list of features every time I do a video, uh, that doesn't mean we're not working on the game. Uh, far from it. It's just that it's less visible stuff, and um, often that makes the biggest difference to how much fun the game is. So um, there may come a time where, like, I've been working on the game for three weeks and I do a video. And it'll be like, I can't show you anything that's changed. Um, but loads of stuff will have changed because all of these equations um, will have changed. Um, and, and they just tweak things to make things more of a challenge and more interesting. Um, and, and loads of little imbalances get fixed. So um, so Italy's in. This is uh, the version of the game um, that I'm currently working on, but it's not updated yet. It'll be updated in a few days. Um, I've got a few other little tests I want to do and I need to play through a lot of games as Italy to check that nothing weird happens um, and then I'll update the game uh, and then beyond that there's going to be a little bit of a pause in terms of adding new content and new countries while I go through stuff and work really work on the balance and get all of the numbers right and address any concerns about that. Um, so that's coming up but we always have the voting thing so always vote on what you think the priorities for the game should be. Anyway, that's it for another three weeks. Um, this is Democracy 4. Thank you for watching. We're in early access, but I think you can tell it's it's uh, it's pretty playable. I mean, thousands of people playing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's on Steam. It's on the Epic Store. It's on the Humble Store. It's on GOG. I've probably forgotten some. Um, you can buy it direct from us with the Humble Widget. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again in three weeks.